Stock market indices like the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones are currently sitting at three to four year valuation lows with high potential for continued declines in the foreseeable future. And this leaves many stocks and other assets with highly inflated dividend yields that may or may not be sustainable in the short to medium term, especially for real estate investment trusts, which many of them currently have double digit dividend yields. But are these inflated dividend yields sustainable for real estate investment trusts? and where do REITs currently stand during this extremely difficult financial climate? This is the question that we're going to be diving into today and I really hope you enjoy the video. Hey what's going on savers and investors? As always I hope you had a great weekend and that you had some time to refocus your thoughts while markets were closed towards your financial game plan in the coming weeks and months. If you're new to the channel then welcome my name is Griffin and in today's video we're going to be going over real estate investment trusts or REITs for short as we call them in the investing world going over what a REIT is and how their business model and dividend distributions may be highly impacted by the current financial climate, but also everyday tenant and landlord financial transactions. I really hope you enjoyed today's video as it's taken quite a bit of research to put together for you guys. So if at any point in today's video, you're enjoying the content and it's providing you value, then make sure to destroy the like button. It really helps the channel grow. So on that note, let's jump back into what a REIT is to give you some context around what we're speaking about. About if you're not quite sure of it. So a real estate investment trust or REIT for short is a publicly traded company that happens to own and manage real estate investments as their primary business model and they have to derive at least 75% of their income from rental income or sale of property in any given year. And REITs are financial securities that you can trade on stock exchanges just like you would a common stock or an ETF that you can buy and sell throughout the trading day but a REIT happens to be a company that owns and manages real estate instead of, for example, Apple that sells physical products. By holding real estate investment trusts in your stock market portfolio, you're able to expose yourself as an investor to appreciation of property as well as reoccurring dividend income while avoiding all hassles typically associated with owning physical real estate that most people aren't really interested in. This makes REITs an incredibly simple way for the average retail investor to ride the coattails of the Canadian real estate market, which has benefited from huge appreciation over the last few decades. Other attractive elements of REITs over physical real estate for the average retail stock investor include low barriers of entry into real estate as well as high levels of liquidity, lack of accounting, and then exposure to a variety of different real estate industries as well as real estate properties. So at this point, it seems like REITs are pretty awesome, right? Low barrier of entry into real estate, reoccurring dividend payments, etc, etc. And for the most part, REITs are pretty awesome and that's why I hold a large chunk of them in my own stock market portfolio. But the issue arises in economic downturns as we're experiencing right now when landlords, which REITs are landlords, have trouble collecting rents from their tenants and then redistributing dividend payments back out to shareholders, which are you and I. And that's one of the main reasons why people hold REITs in the first place is for that dividend income. With that said, let's get a bit of context as to why REITs are typically seen as good positions to hold for reoccurring dividend income in your stock market portfolio in the first place. Remember that with a REIT, their main business is to own and operate revenue generating properties. And in Canada, the federal government allows REITs to benefit from a nice tax exemption if they redistribute a high percentage of their net income back to shareholders in the form of dividend income, typically in the 85 to 95% range. And this is true in the United States as well, where REITs redistribute 90% of their net income to shareholders as dividend payments. The REIT collects the rental income from tenants, pays its expenses, and then distributes basically all of its remaining income back to shareholders. And this is really the primary reason why most REITs have both high dividend yields in contrast to typical dividend stocks, but also pay those dividends on a monthly schedule. All right, so now that we have a better understanding of what a REIT even is and why they redistribute a high portion of their earnings back to shareholders as dividend dividend payments, the question that pops now into my mind is whether or not these high dividend yields are even going to be sustainable during this economic climate as unemployment rates are skyrocketing and most businesses are currently closed for all business operations. Because remember here that a real estate investment trust revenues are generated from collecting rents from their tenants, but the tenants themselves, depending on the type of real estate owned, are either going to be individual people, if it's apartment complexes, which these individuals 
may be out of work, or it could be larger retail establishments, let's say like a Best Buy or other brick and mortar store like that, which is closed right now for all business. So these businesses are not generating revenues and could potentially default on payments, which would be a serious problem for the revenues of real estate investment trusts. It's really important to understand that there are different types of real estate investment trusts in Canada and other countries based on the types of property owned within that trust. So some of them are going to focus on apartment buildings specifically, others office buildings, retail and malls, et cetera, et cetera. There's different types of real estate investment trusts and each one is going to be impacted differently by an economic downturn based on the type of tenant that they have and whether or not these tenants are able to pay their rent payments on time. And right now with the current medical situation, there's certain types of real estate investment trusts that are getting hit quite a bit harder than others based on the nature of the properties that they own within that trust. So the way I'd like to do this is first of all, go over some highly relevant statistics and numbers related to real estate investment trusts and the whole economic climate. And then we're going to dive in to a couple specific REITs that I picked out and go over the balance sheet and numbers for each one and give you basically my opinion about how you should approach reinvesting right now to benefit your portfolio while being risk averse. REITs have long been considered as an asset class that can provide investors with relatively high and steady dividend income as well as appreciation. But since the stock market peak in February, REITs have become the worst performing asset class in the nation's benchmark index with more than 40% drop across the board. This is really major if you think about it because only a couple weeks to a month back, the main business model of a real estate investment trust, which is collecting rents from tenants, was not yet in jeopardy on a wide scale level. Most people were still at work collecting income from their job and most businesses were still open at that point. So on a wide scale level, the idea of all tenants defaulting on payments was not yet in jeopardy on a wide scale level. This really showcases how investor emotion as well as bearish outlook on the market can have such a significant impact on the share valuation of financial securities. And in the case of real estate investment trusts, having dropped 40% across the board, I don't necessarily think that this is justified for these financial securities, or at least for every single company here, because for the most part, most tenants are going to continue paying rents. It's not like all real estate investment trusts right out the gate are not gonna get any rents coming in whatsoever, like some other companies in the US, for example, airlines, let's say, which right now have zero income coming in. For the most part, these tenants are going to continue paying rent. And even if there is truncated revenues for real estate investment trusts, the fact that some of these uh, REITs have dropped by 40, 50% and their balance sheets are still okay, as we're about to see, I don't necessarily think that this is justified. And it really showcases that investors right now are thinking that from uh, this point on, pretty much all tenants are going to default on payments, which I don't really think is the case. All of this has resulted in dividend yields for most REITs to skyrocket as share prices have fallen from investors anticipating dividend cuts or temporary suspensions altogether. For example, if you take a look at this chart right here, this is the TSX REIT index average yield from April 2019 to now March 2020, where you can see how dramatically dividend yields were impacted by most REITs share values free falling. And right here are a couple examples of other real estate investment trusts that's dividend yield has skyrocketed over the past month or so as prices have dropped. Now, one thing that's quite interesting about this situation is that generally speaking, when interest rates drop, as we're experiencing right now, if you were to look on the website of the Bank of Canada, well, usually this has a positive impact on the share price of real estate investment trusts, because what this means is that these trusts would be able to borrow at a lower interest rate and therefore expand their operations at a lower cost. So although lower interest rates would generally be a positive thing for real estate investment trusts, right now we're seeing the complete opposite because this the situation we're living through right now is far different than any other financial recession like in 2008 for example or in 2000 where lowered interest rates did have a positive impact on real estate investors and real estate investment trusts right now there's kind of fear amidst the market and investors that tenants are going to be defaulting on their payments this is going to result in truncated revenues for the real estate investment trusts and therefore have an impact
impact on dividend distributions. Another element to consider here would be the unemployment rate, which is skyrocketing. And for some REITs who focus on residential real estate, this can have a strong impact on truncated revenues. There are now 2.7 million Canadians unemployed and estimates of a 15% unemployment rate in the United States by June. This is a huge issue for residential landlords and real estate investment trusts. With that said though, even though the unemployment rate in both Canada and the United States is far greater than what we've seen in recent years, the stimulus packages in both companies is definitely going to be a factor that's gonna help individuals pay for their living expenses, such as rent, food, etc. And I don't necessarily think that real estate investment trusts are going to have such a major impact on truncated revenues as the price would reflect in the stock market right now for some of these REITs, which are down 40-50%. And with that said, as we're about to see, most of these companies still have enough cash left over in order to cover dividend payments moving forward. So with that said, is it a good idea or not to be capitalizing on some of these real estate investment trusts that are down 20 to 60% in some cases and getting in on some double digit dividend yields? And personally, do I think REITs are gonna be cutting their dividends in the coming quarters? Well, obviously that question is way too broad if we were to look at all REITs in one single basket. However, I do think that with individual REIT positions, depending on what types of real estate they own, this is definitely a position where you can get in on some real estate investment trusts at a really low price with a nice dividend yield moving forward. But what's really going to be important when assessing these as we're gonna look at shortly is having a strong balance sheet with assets versus liabilities. Total current assets need to far exceed total current liabilities, as well as strong cash flows and funds from operations. If you aren't sure what funds from operations are, for short FFO, without getting too complicated, this is basically the equivalent of a regular company's net income, but for a real estate investment trust, because it takes the net income and then looks at how much of it is derived from rental income rather than sale of assets and other factors that can boost the net income in relation to the true revenue of rental business operations. Now that we have a better idea of how REITs work and how they're impacted by the whole medical situation and economic slowdown, let's now dive into an Excel spreadsheet where we're gonna look over about five different real estate investment trusts in different categories in real estate, going over balance sheet, funds from operation, dividend payout ratios, etc. And I'm gonna share my thoughts on which ones would be good buys right now and which ones could potentially be higher risk and you might want to stay away from. All right, so this here is an Excel spreadsheet that I made where we're going to be able to compare six top Canadian real estate investment trusts. And this might look relatively complicated, but we're going to go through everything and I'm going to go through the numbers with you so that you can have a clear picture of what we're comparing right here. So up here, we have the six real estate investment trusts that I'm speaking about and I categorize them by type of real estate owned within this trust. So with Allied Properties, we have office buildings, Granite REIT we have in industrial, residential, retail, retail, and then hr.un is an office slash retail slash residential REIT because they own a variety of different property types. So this first area of data right here is essentially the price of the asset before and after the crash, and then subsequently the current dividend yield as a result of the crash. So we're gonna start off with allied properties and then work our way over all the way to HR REIT. Starting with Allied Properties here, the peak in February was $60 and now it has fallen 29.43%, which is now translating into a dividend yield of 3.9%. And I do also wanna mention that these are numbers at the time of filming this video, so it might have changed by the time I come around to posting the video. If we keep going down here, we have revenues of 541 million, uh, cost of revenues, everything here is relatively fine, but we can see here that there's a gain on on sale of security of $419 million. So this actually will be included in total net income for 2019. But in regards to actual revenues collected from tenants, a gain on sale of security is not taken into account when calculating the funds from operation, which is a much more accurate way of showcasing earnings for a real estate investment trust rather than an actual company. Because for a real estate investment trust, the funds from operation, as we saw earlier, does not take into account sale of security and the distribution rate of dividends
dividends is based on funds from operations. So as we can see here though, the forecasted annual revenue growth from Morningstar for Allied Properties is still 8.6% in 2020, which is taking into account the current financial situation where businesses are closed. So because this is an office building REIT, the revenues are not going to be as impacted because most likely tenants are going to continue paying their rents. And even if their rent were somewhat truncated very quickly, as we can see right here, they have $208 million of cash and cash equivalents in the bank right now, and their total dividends paid in 2019 were $152 million. So even if they were in a pinch in the short term, they would still be able to maintain their dividend payments. Another important thing to look at here is their total current assets. They have $343 million in total current assets and $277 million in total current liabilities, meaning that this company is in a good financial situation if they were to have truncated revenues in the short term. Now, if we go down here, we can see distributions per share was $1.60 per share, and then the FFO per share, which is based Basically, the earnings per share for a real estate investment trust was 2.227 in 2019, meaning that the distribution to FFO here, which is kind of the same thing as a dividend payout ratio in a typical company, is 72%. So for a real estate investment trust such as Allied Properties, which deals in office buildings, I'm personally not worried that they're going to maintain their dividend yield moving forward. In addition to this, Morningstar's analysis rating is saying that a fair value would be $57.81 and it's currently trading for around 42.34, which is 27% undervalued. Now, a different way of showcasing the actual valuation of this real estate investment trust would be the price to FFO, which is basically a price to earnings ratio for a real estate investment trust. In this particular case, the industry average price to FFO before the crash was 16.5, and right now I'm estimating that it's probably around 11 to 12. So if you were to compare the current price to FFO of allied properties to the industry average, which again is most likely in the 12 range, it could be considered overvalued. But nonetheless, this is a really solid company with a great balance sheet and recurring earnings. And I think that this is a great buy moving forward. Now that we've gone over allied properties, you have a better idea of how this sheet works. So I'm going to kind of breeze through the other real estate investment trusts. The next one is Granite REIT, ticker GRT.UN. And this is an industrial REIT. So they own industrial real estate, such as warehouses and other things of that nature, where companies such as Magda International that manufacture car parts, these are the types of tenants that deal with granite REIT. Currently, the fall was 26.34%, resulting in a current yield of 5.27%. It's very evident when we compare these REITs side by side that the ones dealing in residential and retail real estate, which are most impacted by the current situation with the medical issue and closure of businesses, these are the ones that got impacted the most and got the largest fall of share value in the short term. As we can see here, Morningstar is estimating that Granite REIT is going to have an annual revenue growth of 13.5% percent in 2020 and this is because their tenants are industrial tenants that are going to continue paying rent even during this economic situation and above that they currently have 298 million dollars in cash and cash equivalents and their dividends paid out in 2019 were 150 million dollars so this is a company that's going to be completely fine and continue paying out their dividend in my opinion moving on to the next REIT we have cap REIT ticker car.un and this is by far one of the most popular REITs in Canada on the residential sector and as we can see it has gone down 32.69% and the current yield is 3.34% which is still a great yield for any dividend investment moving forward. Now this REIT is a residential REIT and for this reason Morningstar is estimating that they're going to have truncated revenues in 2020 of 5.60% less than in 2019 but again this isn't all that much if you think about it. In the big picture a drop of annual revenue of 5.6% isn't all that much especially considering that they have $477 million in cash and they only have $146 million of dividends paid out. However, this is the first REIT that we're looking at that has total current assets below their total current liabilities. But if you think about this, this isn't all that big of an issue because this company is still generating hundreds of million dollars in revenues per year. They're only forecasting to have a 5.6% revenue dip in 2020 versus 2019. So again, I think that 
that this company is going to be completely fine. And the fact that the shares have dropped so dramatically, in my opinion, is a good time to get in. After all, they have $14 billion in total assets and $5.6 billion in total liabilities. Now that we're moving on to the retail REITs, such as RealCan and Smart Centers, these are the two REITs that got hit the hardest with 46% dip and a 44% dip because their tenants are currently completely out of business for the most part and shut down. This has resulted in skyrocketing dividend yields at 9.68% and 10.3%. However, do I think that this is going to be sustainable? Well, this is relatively debatable compared to the other real estate investment trusts that we just looked at in different industries. First and foremost, the forecasted annual revenue growth for RealCan is negative 7.9% and the forecasted annual revenue growth for smart centers is negative 3.9%. This isn't necessarily a huge issue to me in the short to medium term. However, the fact that RealCan only has $93 million in cash and cash equivalents and their dividend paid out in 2019 was 442 million, this would basically mean that if the revenues were highly impacted, such as an 8% dip, which is significant compared to other real estate investment trusts here, they would have to dip into their cash and total current assets in order to continue paying out that dividend yield. And as we can see here, their total current assets are way below their total current liabilities. So the way I'm feeling about this company is depending on how long the medical issue continues and how long businesses are closed, depending on how many of their tenants are defaulting on payments, this could have an impact on their dividend yield. And the same is relatively true for smart centers. As we can see here, their cash is far below their current dividend paid out, as well as their total current assets are far below their total current liabilities. So I'm not going to go through everything for this read again, because it's relatively similar to RealCan. I would basically think that most likely in the short to medium term, they're either going to keep their dividend the same, and they're not going to be raising them at all. And the companies might even decide to lower their dividend payouts in the near future. With that said though, the fact that these total current assets are far below the total current liabilities for both RealCan and Smart Centers, this is not nearly as detrimental as for example some of the American Airlines where their total current assets are once again far below their total current liabilities. However, they're not generating any revenue whatsoever. These companies are still going to generate revenues. The forecast is just that they're going to be truncated by around 10 to 5 percent. And finally, the last REIT we're going to be looking at here is H&R REIT, ticker HR.UN, and this is a real estate investment trust that deals in office, retail, and residential properties, and this one has currently fell by around 63%, resulting in a dividend yield of 17.1%, which is just massive, and most investors looking at this, including myself, I would tend to think that they're not going to sustain this dividend yield, but let's look at the numbers. Going over the 2019 financials, we see that they have revenues of $1.15 billion as well as cost of revenues of 438 million so nothing really interesting here their total net income was 340 million dollars and right now the forecasted annual revenue growth is still 4.8 percent most likely due to the fact that they have a large portion of office space cash and cash equivalents are at 48.64 million and the dividends paid in 2019 was 394 million so just in their cash they wouldn't be able to continue paying out their dividend however their total current assets are about four four times larger than their total current liabilities. So I don't necessarily think that this is a company that's going to continue raising their dividends in the short term. However, I don't get the impression personally that they're going to eliminate their dividend altogether. I think they're going to continue paying it out. In addition to this, their price to FFO, so basically their PE ratio right now is 4.6%, putting it completely undervalued based on the industry average PFFO, which again is around 12, I would say. Finally, the current price is at around 8.09 and Morningstar is saying that fair value would be about 35.23, meaning that it's 77% undervalued. And finally, if we look at their total assets, they're about double the total liabilities. To summarize everything we just covered, I'm basically just saying that the REITs that are being affected the most on the short term are the residential and retail REITs, such as CapReit, RealCan, and Smart Centers, because most of their tenants are not generating any revenue right now. However, in the big picture, this is not nearly as bad as some of the other companies in the United States, such as airlines and cruise lines that have the potential of going completely bankrupt. I really hope that my explanation of what's currently going on in the real estate investment trust space, as well as the overview of balance sheet and financials for some of these individual positions, helped you better understand why some of these real estate investment trusts are really getting hammered right now in the stock market, and why some of these other positions, I personally don't really believe that it's justified the amount that they have dropped in the past month or so. Obviously, you really can't treat all REITs the same because they operate in different
different facets of real estate in both Canada and the US and some of them are going to be highly exposed to what's currently going on from a business and a tenant standpoint on a personal level. However, I really think that some of these positions are at a steal of a price right now and if you do get in, you can also capitalize on a really high dividend yield compared to what you could get them at two months ago, for example. So personally, I believe that adding REITs to your portfolio is a great idea for further diversification as well as appreciation of real estate in Canada or the US and also benefiting from a dividend income moving forward. What do you think of real estate investment trusts right now? Are you adding some to your portfolio? Are they on your watch list? Or do you think it's too risky and that too many tenants are gonna be defaulting on payments in the coming months? I'd love to know. Let me know down in the comments what you think. And while you're at it, make sure to smash the like button if you enjoyed this video and consider subscribing to the channel if you wanna learn more about real estate investing and personal finance. So on that note, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.